Hello and welcome to the Basketball Addicts Podcast. And yeah, yes, <laughs> there's a different intro today, uh, but Chris is here, as you can tell. I don't know if you didn't hear his screams, then you need to turn up your volume. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so today we have a really interesting idea. Basically, this is today we're going to be able to have a very good conversation about how to actually determine how great a modern player is and being able to compare them from players to the different eras. Because we hear the theory a lot of, oh, this guy was the best player in his era. You can't compare eras. Well, you guys are in luck today because Chris and I have done research on this every single era. You we guys really can have. go look of our Evolution of Basketball series where we broke yeah. down the top 10 players of each decade. And we didn't just watch those top 10 players. No, we watched 25, 30, watching full games. And then we mm-hmm. did the top 75 players of all time where the list at each position and where the list was a hundred da- deep. And we started from the beginning of the NBA in like 1950s and sixties. So you guys have somebody here, me and Chris that actually know each era and how the game was played and can equate this to comparing it from people of today's era. And we're yeah. going to be talking about players like how does James compare to a guy like John Stockton, completely different styles of basketball. How does a Russell Westbrook, who's a high turnover guy compare to like a Bob Cousy or somebody that's, you know, traditional high, high assist to turnover ratio, great passer, you know, efficient style of basketball. How do you compare a Giannis to a, even a Tim Duncan, right? One's post dominance and one's a ball handler, but they're same position and they do similar things. So, and a Jokic, I mean, the quandary of Jokic, I mean, yeah. the, no center in the history of time has ever looked like Nicole Jokic. So we're going to be talking about modern players today and mm-hmm. comp- Comparing them to players of old because we actually have seen these guys, older players, play in their eras and we know how those games were played in each decade. So we're going to give you a really good conversation today. I'm really looking forward to it, Chris. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. (laughs) All right. Um, How about we uh, just start off with a topic that I feel like Chris and I both really, really want to talk about. Dame Mm -hmm. Lillard. Okay. Okay. So Dame Dalla is is everybody has a different view on how you would rate Dame as an all time point guard, and Dame mm-hmm. is just a world class shot creator for himself. And like, how do you compare Dame to a Stockton? How do you compare Dame to a Gary Payton? How do you compare Dame to an Oscar Robinson? So Chris, in your words, how does Dame compare to the older guys, and how is his game? elevate and just just try to describe it the best way you can the best way i can so yes. as you're going through as you're okay so look as i'm listening to you and i'm pretty sure of those of you who you know who are listening as well or will be listening um <clears throat> as you're talking about stockton compared to dame i'm thinking that's not possible as you thinking gary <laughs> payton compared to dame i'm just thinking that's uh-huh. not possible you know all these older guards you know like after once Allen Iverson, it, you know, enters the league, uh-huh. the guards start looking very different. Even with Isaiah yes. Thomas, who was before his time, John, uh, Pete, uh, you know, Pistol Pete Maravich before his time, those kind of guards were before their time. It looked yeah. very different to the guards we have now. We have yes. guys who just, you know, wake up and shoot from half court and just knock it down. <laughs> like, yes. like, get out of the yes. bed and shoot from half court and knock it mm-hmm. down. Like, it, it, we've never seen any guards like this before. This is definitely a guard revolution that's uh-huh. been ongoing since Steph Curry came into the league. So how? So the question is, how do I compare? I believe you can't. I don't think you can because there's different... The eras were too different and the way that the game was played and the guard play is not similar at all. The guard play now is can be some kind of predicate, can be some... Some just a little bit, you know, kind of predicated on, you know, passing. But majority of the times we have these very uber athletic point guards, minus Luca, <laughs> mm-hmm. who can pass really well or or can just score the heck the heck out the b- basketball with with no problem. Like the Curries, the Kyrie's, you know, crazy handles. Um, you know what I mean? Or the Dames who just like I said, like Dame who just shoots from anywhere and he was really athletic when he first came into the league was dunking over everybody he looked like he looked like russ a little bit yeah um when he first came into the league um 
So I just don't think that there's too much comparisons. Now, what I would do, I still would, even though I don't believe there's a comparison, I would still give the flowers to those who came before. And I would say, like, John Stockton, he was great at what he did. He was in the era of the pick and roll, and he really maximized his potential with Carl Malone. And then he, that's why yeah. he's the all-time steals leader, is because he was, you know, not just the pick and roll, the system that he was placed in allowed him to play defense at such a high level, which, uh, which made the team better defensively, and then yes. also it created more opportunities for Carl Malone. That's why he was so high on the, on the list, because of the pick and roll. Which is what started by steals, steals, pick and roll, get the, the defense set up. That's that's. I mean, get the offense set up. That's just how the game was played during that time period. There wasn't too much, as it is now. I would say. I wouldn't say it was a lot of ISO play. I, I, I would okay. say it was more of a team game, and I think that that's something that I think some. I think I was listening to somebody talk about. He said that the the game has changed too much for him. He said that there's not a lot of there's too much individual basketball. There's not a lot a lot of team play, and mm-hmm. I, I can agree to to an extent. There's a lot of ISO ball now. We play a lot of mm-hmm. ISO ball. They played a lot more team basketball. So I think True. that that's like that's one way that John Stockton was able to maximize what he had at the time during his time period, where the game was more team predicated than it is now. Yeah. I think I'm going to disagree with you a little bit. I think I can compare Damon Stockton. Okay. And I, th- I think I think the reason why is because when I think about the 90s and the 80s and which the areas Stockton played in, his mm-hmm. the offense, you have to, I'll paint you a picture here. The uh-huh. offenses were pre- predicated about getting it to the bigs and yes. the point guards were people who are different than what th- we know today. Their first job was to get everybody else involved. Their first uh-huh. job was to be great passers and secondary scorers, right? Or score uh-huh. or p- great passers and great defenders. Maybe they were lacking scoring wise, like a Mark Jackson, for example, who can't score to save his life, but is a world class passer and pretty good defender. Yeah. Um, but you have to understand that that system, having a great world class passer at the point guard position, was so much more valuable than what it is today because that's how the game was played. So Uh John Stockton was much more valuable than the 18 points per game that he averaged. He never averaged more than 20. But when you watch him play, his passing is ridiculous. His ability to read defenses, expose people, get easy points for everybody else involved. His impacting on winning was exponentially high from the passing abilities. And was Mm. he a great attacker of the rim? No, but he could really shoot the three, which every team in the 90s had one guy that could shoot the three. Think about Danny Ainge and then, you know, the... And, and the Lakers had, you know, Michael Cooper, and then they had uh, Brian Scott with Magic Johnson, right? Every, every good yeah. team had one shooter. They didn't have to have yes, one than at two. least one. Yeah. yeah, and John Stockton could be that guy, right? And mm-hmm. he elevated his team so much because of that. So you have to really elevate John Stockton much more than what the stats would look like. But Dame, Dame may not be the great passer that John Stockton is. Is he a pretty decent sure. passer? Yes. But his yeah. ability to shot create from the three-point line cause so much gravitational pull and bring so many people around him that it makes the, the offense so much easier, right? Be, and that is a great um, factor and a great thing that he, he has an effect on defenses. It's a kind of similar thing to Stockton where they had such ridiculous strengths that they're both all-time great point guards. If I had to say, oh, Jason – Pick one because, you know, everybody wants to know that. Um, I would say I would probably take I take Stockton. I would take Stockton because even though the points are amazing, I, John Stockton's passing is so ridiculously high. And if you played in today's era, you have to understand that three-point shot would become more valuable, right? Yeah. And in his total efficiency of style, play would become more valuable. So, you know, today's point guards are statistically fluffed, comparatively speaking, to players of different eras because the whole system's re- set around pick and rolls. Their yeah. assists are more fluff. It's harder to pass in the and then the eighties and the nineties because it was defenses were trying to stop pass first. They weren't trying mm-hmm. to stop. They weren't stop trying to stop John Stockton from scoring. They're trying to stop him from passing, right? So mm-hmm. the defenses schemes were meant to try to stop that. So you put all those things together, and I would take John. John's a better defender. Um, John's overall passing acumen's higher, but I would say Dame can go head-to-head with a lot of these all-time great point guards because of all the gravity that he pulls in from the three-point line. 
So when you mean in, you, you talk gravity, you said you would take Stockton. So I guess my question is, yes, is between the Stockton Dame debate, like, are you saying that yeah. you're comparing in the sense that that they both um, make their teams better in a way, or how? Where is your comparison coming from? Where does it stem from? Is what I'm asking. People really underrate overwhelming strengths. Because I can give you a formula of how winning is done, but when you're a ridiculous passer like John Stockton, it doesn't even go on to the to the stat sheet, right? It doesn't go into the formula. It doesn't fit yeah. into the formula. And Dame's a similar guy. Dame's a similar guy with that three-point shot and that perimeter shot creation, the way it manipulates defenses can be similar into that. So they're very similar players in the, the having one overwhelming skill and their game's built around that. And... Mm-hmm. uh you know, I think that's the beauty of this just different eras is John Stockton and Dame Lillard, similar type of players, mm. just not in the way that you would think. Right. And yeah. uh, I think because of that, you can compare point guys from different eras because you can compare overwhelming strengths. OK, so, so I mean, so, OK, so and then here's another thing. I have a couple critiques, right? <laughs> Just, okay. just a couple. Go for it. So you said that today's passing is a bit fluff for the point guard, right? Yes. Wouldn't the 90s, the 80s passing be a bit fluff if majority of the time is that the it's, it's a pass first type of league at that point in time so that the ball is always being passed first? So then you would you would more likely get assists because you, if you're passing to the big man, you have a big man like Shaq, you have a big man like Carl Malone, you have a big man like mm-hmm. Sean Kemp. You know, people like that who's going to score, you know what I mean, who scores really well, a, a Patrick Ewing, a Charles Barkley, you know what I mean? Yeah. Those people are going to, they're going to make, a, they're going to make your assist numbers go up because they're more likely to score. So wouldn't I, it make their, their, their stats a bit fluff in the passing department? I feel like you're 100% Even right. Even though they are, I'm sorry. I feel like you're 100% you, right. Okay. I feel like you're 100% right, but the eye test for John Stockton is a little different. But I'm sure there are some guys that have ridiculously high assist numbers that were paired with like Hakeem, paired with a David yeah. Robinson. You know what I mean? Right. I feel like that's a very yeah. good point. Um, you know, even today, the best passer in the NBA is CP3, but when's the last time he's led the league in assists? You know what I right. mean? Like counting stats, I feel like you have 100% correct. Their counting stats of assists might have been fluffed. I, I'm saying the difficulty of the assists are easier now, right? It's a lot more like break down the defense, open shooter, right? That's that's what I'm trying to say. It's a lot of the easier pass, and it was more diff- difficult because the passing lanes were tighter because the defenses weren't as spread out as today. Definitely, definitely, definitely a more condensed game then, right? I definitely yeah. agree with that. But what I will say is that I okay. don't believe that the assists are easier today. Okay, why? Let me hear it. Curious. Because everybody's so long and athletic. Everybody on the court is long and athletic. So like they're all like they, they like you have guys like Kawhi, Giannis. Like you're, you, you know these guys are jumping passing lanes. LeBron in his prime is jumping passing lanes. Like if you're going to play defense, the defenders know who the defenders are, and they're they're jumping passing lanes. Everybody like if there's like there's very few people who are really carving up the defense passing wise. I'll give you more athletic, but I do think that era was taller because more post sure, players. Taller. Because now players. we have more of a small ball thing, you know what I mean. I, I get. What I'll you're say saying, the power forward and the centers were taller, but I'll agree with more athletic now. Yeah, definitely more yeah. athletic. So I feel like now, I mean, like I feel that passing is not a lost art even now, even no. though we do still have like we have these ridiculous scores. It's because yeah. that um, <clears throat> the passes are still. Great. You still have great passes yeah. in the league like CP3, LeBron, Giannis, Luka, like those type of play- Jokic, those kind of players mm-hmm. are still able to really carve up defenses like they did then. But I, I wouldn't say it's easier now. I would say the difficulty because it's not because you you don't know if the person who you're guarding at that time is going to take a three from half court mm-hmm. or is just going to pass the ball like then you kind of knew. So I would yeah. say that the difficulty has risen a bit, actually. Because you don't know when to jump, you, it's like you have to be—you have to be thinking two steps ahead of the person who you're guarding. You have to be like, okay, it, you have to know people's tendencies. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, you, if you're guarding Dame, you're not looking for him to pass right away. You're looking for him to yeah. take the shot, so you're going to guard him a little bit closer. But like, if you're in a league, you know, not saying that that was the case back then, but in majority of the ca- in majority of the teams, that was a case where he was like, he was automatically okay. I'm setting up the offense. I'm looking for the big man. Mm-hmm. Whoever is that guy, he's getting the ball. 
Yeah. It seems like it's easier than I think the difficulty has risen now because you have to think you have to think differently defensively. Unless yeah. you're guarding Michael Jordan, then you kind of know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I would say that the spacing helps today, though, a lot. For sure. Of just getting fluff assists. Definitely increased, uh, increased spacing today, for sure, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Round one. Finish. <laughs> <laughs> Round one. <man. laughs> All right. Let's uh let's uh talk about um let's see here. James Harden. James Harden has a mm-hmm. play style that many people think that with hand checking and things of that nature, they would stop him in the eighties and the nineties, and they kind of discredit his scoring ability and his overall impact on winning, even though you're not a huge James Harden fan because of the way he flops and all that type of stuff. Yeah. I'll ask you this, Chris. How do you calculate James Harden's greatness and then compare it to somebody from the earlier era? Mm. As, 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 I mean, it's – okay, so the bias in me is saying, like, you know, it's it's possible, <laughs> but, you know, like, he's, he's dropping, like, 60 but shooting, like, 13 uh-huh. free throws, like, 14, 15, 20 free throws, 23 free throws. Like, that's majority of yeah. his points. So I would say, like, just the bias side of things, I would say, okay, you know, these are – even when the hand-checking era, you know what I mean, there's – yeah, there's fouls, like, really hard mm-hmm. fouls, of course, but I feel that there's just – um the diff i would say maybe the difficulty a little bit now has risen rather than then i will give that to james harden a difficulty um for sure because if okay so if you take i think the best way to do this is to take james harden and place him you know hypothetically back in like the 80s Hmm. 90s where the hand checking was happening right okay in the hand checking era i don't know this don't quote me i have to look this up (laughs) but in the hand checking era, for everybody who's like, yeah, we're like throwing elbows, everybody's fighting. You know, I mean, I, fouls are still being called. You know, that's that's regardless. Like, True. but the, I would think that James Harden would still, and some people may not agree with me. I don't really agree with myself right now. James Harden <laughs> would still be effective as he is today in that era, and the reason why okay. is because that the defenses are better now than they were then because you cannot touch the defender that much. I feel that you have to be a, you have to be it's a different level of skill now because you can't just okay, I'm going to grab onto your jersey and I'm going to try to get you to go where I got where I'm going. You have to physically be, you know, you know, mentally um and physically built enough to be able to stand in front of the defender. And that's what you know what I mean? I think that defense is harder now versus than it was then unless you have those guys who are like amazing ball handlers but everybody's not an amazing ball handler right now then everybody's amazing ball handler or majority of the players in the league right now are amazing ball handlers or Mm -hmm. or at least good good to great ball handlers i would say Mm -hmm. right everybody then is okay you know they're not really like doing a really spectacular things unless your name is isaiah thomas with the basketball at that point in time unless your name is magic with the basketball during that point in time you know what i mean so i feel like the defensive level has risen now than it did than it was from then so i feel like james harden if he can score in this era without somebody tugging on his jersey he can score in that era with somebody tugging on his jersey okay okay um, you know, I feel like a fun one here is, you know, James Harden. And I feel like a lot of people do not understand this about the NBA. We've said it multiple times, but there's no point in skipping this. The important thing to note is once these great ball handlers came in, Allen Iverson, Grant Hill, these guys came in that could go left or right. Hand checking was basically non usable it wasn't a force like think yeah year one Allen iverson he was like 180 soaking wet like he was so thin it looked like lou williams to people who have, are from this today's era maybe not ever seen ai super thin and tiny guy so hand checking where you push your hands on your hips you try to direct where they're going and that's the way they want to play you would think that would work against a guy like alan Emerson, but it didn't because of his ability to handle go left right they weren't used to guards attacking them to the basket like that they weren't used to guards attacking them like that or used to guards setting up the offense and that's the point of james harden here if i compare him to a guy like clyde drexler right who was great in the 80s and the 90s Right, six six guy who could really be a good mid range shooter and attack the rim and finish and was the second best two guard of the era. You know, 
those strengths for Clyde was really good and really impacted winning. But James Harden's ability, people underrate the tough shot. The tough shot that's unblockable and basically you can't do anything about it leads to so much more winning because in the playoffs, when games matter, that's when the system breaks down. That's when the other team mm-hmm. knows all your plays. That's when the other team's got scheming for all your easy, easy to stop things. And that's when tough shot making is more important. Most important, everybody wants to win championships. Most important part of the time frame of the season. James Harden's game fits it beautifully in the playoffs. James Harden's game is the type of guy that's such a great tough shot creator for himself where he's hitting those crazy shots and his checkmate to that is his ability to draw those fouls when people overplay the shot. Okay, Reggie Miller did the same th- exact thing in the same era. Reggie yeah. Miller's notorious for sh- shooting the three and sticking out his foot and drawing fouls and people hated him for it. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people really did. Uh, and James Harden's ability to draw those fouls and he's a bigger human being than you think like James Harden's huge. He's wide. You know what I mean? He, get, he can get to the rim and finish. You know, the whole, oh, you know, he's going to get to the rim and he's going to get thrown to the ground once or twice a game. And then we're going to clip that in highlights and people are only going to remember that. Um, it's not going to impact a huge guy like that, right? Like throwing him to the ground. He's like a fucking brick house. Okay, do it again. Thank you. I get my two free throws, <laughs> right? Like that's not going to do anything against him. So James Harden's game is... No era stops his game. No era no. stops the game because the tough shot creation for himself is too great. And then we haven't even started mm. talking about his passing. Like, the dude is a world class passer. He really adds to winning through his great passing ability. So, yes, James Harden's a better player than a guy like Clyde Drexler, who, you know, Clyde Drexler was a really great player in his era, good defender, really good mid range shot of Craver for himself, great athlete. But, Right, like the strengths and the ridiculous impact of James Harden's shot creation to winning and how that manipulates defenses and how unstoppable it is. And when it's unstoppable, all the defense is going to try to come and collapse and stop him from trying to shoot. So it makes it easier to pass, right? Like, all you have to really understand more what things do and do not affect defenses, you know what I mean? And James Harden's style of play is eraless doesn't matter which era he's in he dominates now for those who believe that the 90s 80s were just a tougher basketball and that they would knock him out the air and then you know he would fall down and he's so soft because of the era we are in now that he would he wouldn't try to he wouldn't try to drive on he wouldn't try to drive to the basket anymore uh-huh. he wouldn't try to take shots anymore if you hit him a couple times they keep they say like people like curry like they're kind of soft like they would they would hit him a couple times that he wouldn't want to do the same thing uh-huh. anymore he wouldn't score that much I would say that there are still fouls being called. Yes, you you might be knocking people down, but yeah. st- fouls are still being called, and that's where James Harden lives. And then you have to. And then the thing is that if the level of defense, and I believe this is my honest opinion, has increased, I mean the defensive the difficulty right now is up than it was then defensively. So if he if, if he can get past those defenders, how you think that he? I mean, you could punch him in his chest all he wants to, but yeah. if, if if he's getting past you, then what difference does it make? Yeah, true. If if he's creating space in a space in a in a in an era, if you place him back then in an era that doesn't have space, and you're like, what do I yeah. do now? And he's knocking down threes, then what can you do? Yeah, true. Yeah, you're completely right. Yeah. All right. Okay. You ready for the quandary? The X variable. How yeah. the hell do we compare Jokic to any center that's ever played the game? <laughs> Arvita Sabonis. <laughs> okay, I meant I like this, how how do you okay. compare what Jokic is right now to like okay. other centers and like how do you how do you calculate Jokic? Jokic is different, very different. Yes, because I think what really sets him apart is mm-hmm. his passing ability. Is his passing Shush. ability? We've never seen yes. a center a center pass the ball like that. Uh huh. Um. So it's kind of difficult. Um, I would say his impact on the game is very similar to the centers of old. Yes. Um, I've said this on this plat on our platform before is that I believe that um, Embiid is the most dominant, but Jokic is the most skilled out of the yes. centers. Um. So I feel that. In that sense, in his domination skill wise, I feel that he's similar to this. To we can compare them that way, because um, yeah. there's a lot of their skill. Because you have to be a skilled big man 
um, back then because the game was played through you. You had the, that's why Shaq had like fifty one game. You know, like those kind of players are like they're he he would. You can compare him to like players like that because they, uh-huh. they have footwork. Footwork is a big thing. Yes. Um, being able to up fake, down fake, you know what I mean? Con- he does it differently than they do. Like it's more physical, but he does it with more finesse. Yeah. So I feel like it could still be compared because even though it's not power and physicality, it's more mm-hmm. finesse and flair. It's still, yes. the, I still, I feel like it's still a form of dominance, even, even in today's game because it can't be stopped. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like his game is such an interesting quandary because everything pre-2010, 2005 at the center position has been post, right? Mm-hmm. And the whole offense has been built around, you know, being spaced around the post and how do we move out of the post? And there's like a gazillion offenses that are based on like, okay, you catch the ball in the post. Okay, the guard's going to cut and we're going to have somebody cut here and, you know, we're going to have all this movement around them and make sure we have spacing, like, right... You know, everything was built. NBA offense were built. Um, so, you know, a fun thing about Jokic is he doesn't post as much, right? He does post. Like, he is good in the mm-hmm. post. But is he great in the post? No. He's a world class in the mm-hmm. post? No. Is Can he dominate people in this era because there's not many, like, post stoppers? Sure. I mean, could he mm-hmm. do well in other eras? Yes. But, you know, his game is so different because of the handle. The handle is where, you know, centers who may not be extremely dominant um, in the post, where they're a Shaq mm. or they're a Wilt or they're a Kareem, but that handle allows him to get from the mid range to the basket and then finish. Or his handle allows him to fake going to the basket. Now I'm going to pull up this mid range shot that's really clunky and awkward looking, but my shot's always coming all the way back in my head. And it's, you can't really block it because he has terrible shooting form, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> and he, <laughs> you know, he has the value of being a guy that can shoot from the three and he has a very versatile offensive game that's just kind of like read and react um which has real value in the nba and his passing is ridiculous so you know a fun guy to compare him to i feel like is hakeem because like you have to understand a guy like hakeem his post play and the way the offense was built around it was beautiful and the value of a guy like him was immense right because you Mm -hmm. give him the ball in the post everybody knows what on what you're not stopping him right so he's good enough of a passer um he's also a great tough shot maker for himself that just post moves were unstoppable to such an extreme degree that you know his tough shot making translated so well into the playoffs you know, so that equated to winning in an extreme degree. His defense, I mean, if you've seen that guy play defense, you will be amazed. I There isn't a guy in the NBA right now that's a better defender than Hakeem. Like, switchable, ridiculously moving line, literally vertically, great jumper, all-time blocks leader, I think. Um, you know, uh, and... Where's the campaign with Dumbo? No, it's him. It's him. I just, it's him. I thought, yeah, it's him. Uh, you know, his ability to shot block at the rim, his ability to be everywhere defensively is an extreme push on his value, on his greatness, right? And you have to understand that these extreme pushes like Hakeem, who's extreme on defense and extreme on offense, right, are phenomenal players, right? You have to really equate that. And, uh, you know, Hakeem's a better player than Jokic, but without a doubt. Jokic is definitely a guy that can clear some guys that maybe not be Akeem, but maybe, you know, David Robinson, where they're just a tier below, where the tough shot making for himself wasn't as great. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, because Jokic is passing. We've talked about, about this before. Passing is the m- biggest correlation between passing and championships than any other category. You know, there's not every championship has been won by a great individual scorer or a great individual defender, but every team's had passing passing in some way so Jokic's ability to pass is so important and so beautiful to actually nba winning right and Mm -hmm. you know so you have to really be able to evaluate that but you know it's fun to compare him to different eras but i that handle and everything that he has really makes it somebody that can clear people even though his defense is terrible Right, he's never going to be a good defender. He tries defensively, but he's never going to be a good defender because of athletic gifts that are not there. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) fair. So yeah, fair. The Uh, passing, the passing is a big is a big thing for sure. I I can see what you what you were saying there. I was just saying like, hmm. Is there anybody you want to talk about? 
Yo, I was gonna say, of, of course, I want to talk about Lego. Go. <laughs> LeBron James. Okay, interesting. LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. Okay. Um. I I, I I've been. I, I I talk basketball outside outside the podcast, you know, okay. like yeah. to other people. Majority of times, my older brother, right, okay. and he's one of the he's he's one of those guys who watched old school basketball and watched and watched the modern NBA as well. Okay, so he's one of those guys who really compared the two eras a lot. Yeah, and I he tells me, and I just don't understand how he could tell me that. And he tells me like, "Hey, you know, I don't think LeBron could play in these old eras." And I'm like, "Where do you get that from?" <laughs> and he's like, "They wouldn't, you know, like yeah, he's built, but he wouldn't be able to take it. He wouldn't be able to take the toughness of the era." And I'm like, "I doubt that because you're talking about a guy, right, six nine, two fifty, at the small four position." built of granite can handle the ball like a guard when he dr- yeah. coming down the court full speed like a gazelle ready ready to just yam it on your head i mean t- i'm not even talking about current lebron let's just give heat lebron at his prime he would destroy <laughs> that mm-hmm. era yeah easily him yeah. and mike would go back and forth if we want to talk a comparison we if they gave lebron a good team in the 90s they would go back and forth winning yeah. championships yeah, that's that's bullshit. <laughs> let me <laughs> let me tell you why. Okay, the that era. Let's just say the seventies to two thousand. Mm-hmm. That era. If I pose you this question, Chris, that play that era was the physical dominance era. Let's put yeah. point guards in their own category. There's been only two players in that time frame that weren't great athletes that dominated. That actually only one, Larry Bird. Larry Bird's not a good mm-hmm. athlete, but I mean, have you seen the guy play passing, shooting, rebounding, mid post, three point yeah. shooting, post? Like he, he's Luca ish, right? Okay, mm-hmm. so there's that era was dominated by great athletes. Karl Malone, Hakeem mm-hmm. Olajuwon. Have you seen David Robinson? Dude's a fucking freak, right? Yeah. And then we got we got Shaq, we got Kobe, we got MJ, we got Scottie Pippen. Clyde Drexler's a great athlete. We got mm-hmm. um oh dear goodness. Uh Moses Malone. Have you seen that guy? He's mm-hmm. freaking huge. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yeah. I mean Wilson the sixties. I mean then we got um George Gerving, who's a really good athlete. George right? Gervin, David Thompson. David Thompson, David Thompson. He, he was called Skywalker Thompson, right? Like yeah. every great Dominique Wilkins, Dominique yeah. Wilkins, right? Dominique Wilkins is a great example of this. Tell me how great Dominique Wilkins was skilled wise. Oh, not really. He just wasn't skilled. He averaged more than 30 points per game multiple times. This is the yeah. reason why in, a, in an era that's built around toughness and throwing people around the rim, People who are more physically inclined, more physically gifted, do better. Because when you're playing physical with them, they get to play more physical with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who might be the most greatest athlete of all time who's built like a tank? LeBron James. Yes. No. 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 That that's no. <laughs> no. Right. I, I, I would yeah. I would dunk on your brother. Okay. I wish you li- <laughs> I hope he listens to this. Tell him your brother. You are wrong. Okay. And look, look, let, let, a simple example of this is if you try to play fight with somebody, the the more let's say you just put in fifty percent of your energy. It's just not going to make that much of a difference. But we're putting 100% of our energy. The strongest person is going to win, right? Like, yeah. if you so if the toughness and the physicalness are elevated in that era, like everybody thinks it is, then a guy like LeBron's going to do better, right? <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. It's not that complicated. Every player in that era, like even today, Steph's not a great athlete. Kyrie's not a great athlete. Luka's not a great athlete. 
right? Like today, a lot skill is so ridiculously advanced that it's able mm-hmm. to overcome these physical differences, right? And mm-hmm. Steph's not a Steph's not that Luca's not that guy. Kyrie is not that kind of athlete. James Harden's yeah. not ridiculously athletic, right? Like skill has grown to such an extreme degree now that it can overcome those things because because of just evolution. Okay, I watched this guy play in the '90s. I watched this guy play in the 2000s. We learned from you know it's simple, right? But mm-hmm. back then it was more about physical dominance because the skill just wasn't there yet right we didn't have people yeah. pulling from you know the volleyball line you know what I mean? from the logo mm-hmm. so um yeah yeah lebron might be better in that era because the physical gifts i can see that too i can see that too he could be he could be better in that era lebron would get- dominate any <laughs> any era and that's get- just me being me <laughs> he, would, I, he would dominate any era. Yeah. Well, what's gonna like? You gotta understand this too, you know. And I like talking about LeBron is because like he's so strong. You know what I mean? Yes. So strong and so big and strong is that he's consistent. You watch a game, he's fouled as he the entire yes. time he has the yes. ball. He is fouled as soon as he yes. starts. As soon as he puts his head down and drives toward the basket, it's ten yes. hands on him. <laughs> yes. Everybody <laughs> that fouled him, and they he uh-huh. may not get a call. True. So, like in a in an era where they're like pushing people out of the air and stuff like uh-huh. that like if he's being fouled <laughs> by every person on the but you know but like two or three p- defenders at a time that's yeah. not going to be too too bad on him because he's still going to be able to dominate yeah he's already going through that now yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah totally wrong <laughs> totally yeah. wrong and then he's gonna carve you up defensively too i mean with this passing then he's gonna then he's gonna it, then he's gonna knock down a couple shots you're gonna look at like what do i do here <laughs> true <clears throat> all right i have a fun conversation here from one physical okay. guy to another Giannis antetokounmpo and many power forwards today and we've talked about this podcast the revolution at the power forward position is guys that used to be guys that would be getting taught how to play in the post now are getting taught how to handle and their size combined with their handle is allowing these power forward athletes the guys who would be in the post back in the day to dominate today's era um yeah so, Chris, how would you compare people that played in the post in the 2090s, 80s, basically every time frame before Giannis in this current era to these guys who handle, and how would you do that? Well, I mean, if you were taking Giannis as our um, ideal prototype. As our bar. Yeah. As, as our bar, right? I will, we'll, set, we'll set him as, the, as our modern bar, right? And then we're going to yeah. compare the older players. I would say that physically, dominantly, I mean, physically in the post, virtually the same, right? But I think that what really separates the, um, you know, the old school players from, yeah, the older eras from the newer eras, meaning the Giannis and the Cats and those kind of players, is that they can step away. They don't have to be physically back to the basket to be effective. We mean, like, Giannis can't shoot a three to save his life. Big fucking whoop, but he he also has that ability to step away from the basket and maybe knock down a mid range. Mm. And I mean, it may not be as consistent, but he has that ability as well. And then with his handling ability, he could get the ball and bring the ball up like a point guard and drive it down your throat every single time, yes. like with no problem. You, yes. He doesn't have to wait for the pass. He's creating the opportunity. That difference yeah. here is that he's semi a shot creator in a sense. He kind of sort of creates his own shot from like post extended maybe yeah. about to like the mid range you know about like post to the key we yeah. said the top of the key he can, he's, he can create anywhere from in there yeah. so once he has the ball in his hand the difference is that he doesn't have to okay i've said in a pick i'm waiting 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 okay ball time okay back to the basket here it's one bump two bump layup yeah. no he doesn't have to do that he has the ball at the top of the key he's directing yeah. traffic with the ball you know what I mean? He's looking for the right pass. Oh, he doesn't see it. Okay, now I'm going to dominate you. Now here I'm putting the ball on the floor. What can you do? You can't do anything. I'm coming at you full steam ahead. I dunked on your head now. That that's the biggest difference. Yeah. Is that in a sense, not in the true sense of shot creation, but in the sense he he shot creates. He that's that's the biggest difference. Is that the the players now the players like Giannis who really have a handle who can who can step away from who can who don't have to be completely back to the basket. They shot create. In a sense, this yes. players then do not shot create. They have to have the shot created for them. That's the biggest yeah. difference. That's true. 
Yeah, it's a very interesting thing because, you know, the the reality is the power forward position got played out of the NBA right now because it's small ball, mm-hmm. right? Everybody's getting switched on these pick and rolls. And then we got these old legs, not these old legs, but guys that are meant to be in the post. Guys that are good in the post usually are strong. Guys who are good in the post are usually, you know, not very um, – laterally athletic but they're more vertically athletic you know what i mean but they have great footwork and they can overcome their weaknesses and they have great height and those guys got played out of the nba because of switching and how uh how much they got exposed on the defensive end uh but the guys today are guys that can guard and guys that can you know bring more value because of the ability to shot create and their ability to handle and you know, people went away from the post at the power forward position in a general sense. So comparing it is very fun, in my opinion. I feel like a good co- comparison is a, a guy like Tim Duncan um, mm-hmm. or a guy like Karl Malone. These power forwards during those time frames were great tough shot creators for themselves. Obviously, the offense mm-hmm. was built around them. Are they reliant on somebody else passing the ball? Yes. Right? But... You know, you have to understand that everything was built around them. All the movement, all the passing, all the, you know, spacing was built around being around the power forward. And that really added value to, like, manipulating defenses. And their ability to be tough shot makers in the post for themselves added value for them to be winners. And their ability to be in the mid-range. A lot of people, power forwards were really good in the mid-range where they would have that mid-post area where they'd be on the wing or near the baseline and they would either shoot over you or, you know, I put the hit ball on hand, hand on the ground once and I finished at the rim, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, a guy like Carmelo could really do that. So could Tim Duncan. And I Good really, f- yeah, I really feel like you have to be able to compare how much value that added in that era to this era. Right. And a guy like Giannis's handle allows him to go anywhere he wants right Mm -hmm. and they're both similar in the sense of like their ability to have unstoppable shots nobody can stop Giannis at the rim right he gets fouled all the time and nobody can stop tim duncan in the post right it's a similar it's a similar force it's a similar um equation the greatness power forwards now to you know old back then because most of them most of their dominance come from similar spots which is near the rim right so I feel like the people who manipulate that better are going to be more highly ranked, right? Like a a guy like Giannis versus, you know, a guy like a Bob Pettit or a guy like a a Bob McAdoo. What Bob McAdoo is not going to choice, but like a guy like Charles Barkley. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like comparing those two, you have to compare their impact and their force, right? And their how much manipulation to defense that happens. And I feel like mm-hmm. it's pretty easy to do this position as long as you just understand the areas of the court that we were manipulated. And, you know, all of that put together, um, uh, you know, these these guys are great. I personally think Giannis is on track to become the greatest power forward of all time because of the passing. Um, he has similar scoring abilities to Tim Duncan, rebounding abilities to Tim Duncan, and defensive abilities. And his passing ability is something that was rare at the power forward position. So... But, uh, yeah, I feel like it's pretty simple, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is there uh, anybody else you want to talk about? I don't know why, but for some reason, um, Kyrie kept jumping out at me. I think that's a good one. Okay. Okay. He's interesting. That's an interesting one. Yeah. It's not too many guards, you know, nowadays who you can compare to Kyrie. I would say that, you know, like AI, Isaiah Mm -hmm. Thomas, um, maybe a little pistol Pete there because of his um, manipulation of the ball. Shot creation for Um, himself, yeah. And the shot creation for himself. I I feel like those kind of of guards can really really make a a comparison for a Kyrie and just those type, those caliber of players like a Curry, those undersized players um, point at the guard position that can really score and um, handle the ball very well. Um, yeah. And it's just like, I think that that's one comparison that you, that you can make. I, I think that, that that's not those, and those guards, you know, like the AIs, the ITs, 
the pistol peeps i feel like those guards were uh, before their time and that's why it's easier to make this comparison than it is with many other players yeah um because of the fact that they you you look at their game you watch it it's like yeah and then you go like you, and you think to yourself like you can that's modern basketball you know Mm-hmm. That that's modern basketball. The way they manipulate the ball, the way they crossing over. Okay, because Isaiah Thomas, he was like, yeah, I was the first person to do the crossover. Yeah. Okay, look, that can do the left to right, and nobody was able to stop that. You know, now Kyrie is yeah. taking the left to right. Steph is taking the left to right. All the AI took mm-hmm. the left to right and did amazing things with and can do amazing things now with just a simple crossover and the different combinations that they that they create to get past the defender and make themselves nearly unguardable where it was just simple things like that that really have that really that was done then that have influenced the game now and have changed it completely and evolved and involved the way that the ball that that shoot the even the way that anybody handles now like you see like what 10 year olds now who like handle yeah. better than, than, than the guys mm-hmm. than the guys in the in the nba then you know so it's like the the different handle i think that's comparable because I, you can see the evolution through time um, I mean, comparable because you can see the evolution through time and the shot creation, the shot creation at the point guard position. Those were guys who, I mean, like, yeah, in the past first league, especially in the old eras, um, still was able to get their shots off. They still were willing to take their to take the shots. They were encouraged to take shots. Whereas all these guards I'm, I'm named now in the modern NBA have the proverbial green light, mm-hmm. where it's just always green. You take whatever shot you think is best, and that's and that's kind of and that's where I say that there's it's a lot of comparisons that can be made. Yeah. between the between those guards yeah yeah i i feel like Kyrie is a guy that's you know his greatness is pretty obvious tough shot creation for himself i would mm-hmm. say that i personally am not as high on Ky- Kyrie because the lack of passing the lack of defense you know he doesn't really impact the game any other way other than shot creation for himself so players like oscar robinson for example who in that era in the 60s you guys would be surprised you know good teams that that didn't have overly dominant centers like a wilt most of them ran off ball screens and like off ball movement for their guards to get open shots and Oscar mm-hmm. Robinson was a guy that you should always somebody setting the screen in the mid range and he come off come around him and he shoot the mid range right over and he would be just so ridiculously efficient at those tough mid range shots for himself um mm-hmm. which have extreme value he's a great passer he's a really good rebounder he's a good defender 65 so you know i would take oscar over him because of the passing ability on those type of things over and i feel like Kyrie's Kyrie is lacking compared to other great point guards because of the passing, right? Like comparing him to an Isaiah Thomas, who's a ridiculous passer and stocked in, and even Gary Payton is a ridiculous defender. He doesn't do well, right? Uh, yeah. But, you know, Kyrie's greatness of ridiculous shot creation um, is phenomenal. But I would say don't let the stat sheet get in the way of making the right decision, right? Like a guy like a John Stockton or a Gary Payton might score eight to 10 less points per game. And Kyrie might have more fluff stats. You might be like, okay, well Gary Payton averaged like eight assists and Kyrie averaged like four or five, but Kyrie averaged more eight point points more a game. Kyrie's got to be the better player, right? Like don't let those stats get into the way of the right decision. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's it comes down to the game and how, how winning is actually equated and, you know, Kyrie's a great player, but comparatively speaking to other all-time great point guards that do more than just scoring, he doesn't compare well. I would say. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I have one other player that I really mm. want to talk about who's such a hot topic. Everybody has this guy everywhere. Russell Westbrook. Okay. Okay. This is, this is a great topic we got to talk about today. Everybody hates on Russ all time wise because of the turnovers right Mm -hmm. everybody hates on him because they think he's inefficient you know people will think oh he has fluff passing assists which i would say 10 assists a game might be a little high for how great of a passer he really is but you know people really are like controversial on russ so how would you compare russ to an isaiah thomas how would you compare russ to an oscar robinson how would you compare russ to a john stockton with guys that don't have as many turnovers. Chris, how would you answer that question? How would you answer that question? 
how would I, how would I compare Russ? Who, yes. who has? How do you calculate hmm. Russ? Great Russ's greatness. Like how do you how do you put all this together, Chris? Me? Okay, so I would put it with tenacity. Okay, that's a good word to put next to his name. <laughs> tenacity. Yes. Tenacity. Um, I would also say um, he has um, what? It's not. It's it's a word for it. I can't think of it right now. Um, well, yeah. Okay. Um, tenacity, hustle, and I would say. Um, Mm. athleticism that would be my equation okay <laughs> yeah okay and the reason why you use those three right okay. is because we you all you have to do is watch a game right yes and you like even i was even now you know even with you know how the media portrays russ mm-hmm. he's still one of the hardest workers on the floor true um, we constantly see it um, he's diving for loose balls he'll find a way to make himself to Im- implement himself somewhere in the game you know, whether it's a good way or in a bad way, he's going to do it. Um, whether it's through his passing ability, his rebounding. I mean, you don't average a rebound. You don't, I mean, you don't average a triple double and without being a good, without being some form of a good player. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I feel like, you know, I just see so much of, um, it's not the killer. I wouldn't say a killer. I would just say tenacity. I think that's a good word. Just so much tenacity when he plays. He plays with so much, like he's that, he's that, he's that effort guy, you know? Like the guy who's like always going to give you 110% no matter what, whether it's, you know, even if he's not making his shots, he's still going to give you 110%. That's Russ. Russ is that guy. And I I just see like that's that's how he plays. And I think that's that's how he plays. And that's how I would like kind of sum him up is that he just he just gives 110% effort all the time on the court you know whether it be his passing whether it be his scoring you know what i mean like the way he attacked the basket he attacks with so much fury and so much you know tenacity that's a good word to use tenacity mm-hmm. keep using it so much fury so much tenacity so much strength so much power especially for a point guard you know he kind of just i would say that's um that's how i would calculate him i would just say tenacity hustle and effort yeah yeah i i definitely feel like when I was younger, right? Which mm-hmm. is weird to say because we're like 25. I'm 25. Right, yeah. When I was 16, 17, 18, I was a part of this fan club of Russ is such an inefficient player. Russ mm-hmm. is terrible. He doesn't equate to winning. You know what I mean? I was buying into the storylines, and I was completely wrong. Let me tell you guys why. First things first, anybody who wants to come for the turnover stats, then... uh let's have a conversation about how LeBron James doesn't understand basketball because he's such a ridiculously high turnover player and probably will finish top five all time in turnovers. Uh, 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 Oh, I hear crickets on the other side. Okay. Thank you. (laughs) Turnover (laughs) stat does not equate to how efficient a player is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me get past that. Okay. Now we're moving on. Okay. Russell Westbrook is a player that is extremely underrated in how he equates to winning basketball. Mm-hmm. His style of play and his ability to put so much force on the rim leads to so much winning, obviously. I mean, he's a freak athlete. He doesn't need a great handle to get by you. One step, I'm there. I'm putting fear into people's hearts. And, you know, great mm-hmm. body, great ability to attack the rim. May not be a world-class shooter from the three-point line, but when a guy, if a guy has spacing right around him, then that doesn't really matter as much. Think about Giannis. That whole system in Milwaukee is built around Giannis. Okay, so he never really built around Russ right. Oh, because there's a guy named Andre Robertson. You used to always be that small <laughs> forward starting. And he'll always be sitting in the corner, and he shot the three-point shot worse than Russ, okay? Yeah, that man yeah. couldn't shoot a lick, okay? It's not Russell Westbrook's fault that he never had another guy that could shoot other than a KD, other than a Paul George mm-hmm. over two-point times, right? Like, they never really had a two-guard that just stood there, right? Like, uh, James Harden, okay, get get out of here. He had him as a six man, okay? He wasn't developed at that point in time, mm-hmm. right? Like, l- most of the time, they had built in correctly around him, um, you know, and they didn't even ever have a big that could really shoot the three. I mean, Serge tried to later in his career, but he never really, you know, did it very well. Um, so you have to get past that, and you have to understand that his passing is 
is the stats overfluffed? Sure. Is he equate to a 10 assist player? If we had to, you know, really equate to like being greatness? No, but is he a player that affects the game with his driving ability so much that it creates easy opportunities for everybody else? Yes. Does that lead to winning? Yes. And the turnovers and the inefficiencies is not what you think it is. The turnovers and efficiencies is him trying to make the best pass possible, even if it's high risk, because he cares about winning. The easy pass, if he just swings it another way, like let's say if he has a choice, he's underneath the rim, and he's got a shoot choice between a corner that's n- very closed off and the guy on the wing who might get closed on to, the closeout might get to him faster, he's going to make it to the corner because that's the better shooter, right? Even if mm-hmm. he, he doesn't care about his turnover stats at all because he is is trying to win the best way possible, even if it's a harder decision because he thinks that, that, that his play style leads to winning that way, right? And you have to understand that he's making those tough decisions. He's making those tough passes because he had to, right? Like he never had more than one shot creator on his team. He never yeah. really had a ton of spacing. They always had a power forward and center, right? It was Serge and Steven Adams for a while. They drafted Devonta Sabonis, and you know what I mean? Like, they always had bigs. So it wasn't like he had a lot of spacing. He didn't have paradise like James Harden where everything's spaced out. Like, OKC was really, really clumped. You have to understand that offensively, it was different. Like, he, he didn't have as much easy passes. And mm-hmm. so he had to force the tough shots, even if there was a turnover, because it would lead to an easier score, right? Like, those things, the system and the way the team was built around him affected him a lot in in his ability to, like, look good on TV, you know what I mean? And yeah. he was a great defender. Well, I'll call him a good defender. Uh, I won't call him a great one, but... Really good defender, really great passer and attacking the wings and really being put in so much pressure at the rim. And you put all those things together and you get a really phenomenal, great player. And he also rebounds mm-hmm. really well. And I feel like you put all those things together and Russ compares very well to a guy like John Stockton, like a like a Oscar Robinson, like a Gary Payton. I think Russell Westbrook's better than any of those guys. I think he's better than Dame because at his peak, he's averaging 30, right? And that wasn't fluff stats. Like nobody ever questioned the scoring was a fluff stat because he was so ridiculously dominant at attacking the rim, right? Yeah. And that gift never really got put in the right place. Now, does he have a weakness? Yes. His weakness is in the playoffs. Sometimes he would shoot too much, right? Let's, Let's be honest here. He does have a weakness, but, you know, it's not like, um, during that time frame, he just didn't really have like a, a third shot creator. It was just kind of like him and Paul George, him, KD, and that's it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and like he had nobody. So Jeremy Lamb, uh, 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 uh right? Uh, so yeah, this is, you know, a team that just didn't know how to build around Russ the best way has misled the NBA audience on how good he is and just the way the media has taken that spun it right now is just, you know, sad for me because Russell Westbrook really is top 10 cemented all time point guard. And I really, I really feel like he's underappreciated. Oh, without a doubt underappreciated. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree with what you said there. All righty. Hey, two great minds think alike, Chris. <laughs> At some point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you have uh, anything Anything else you want to say? Mm-hmm. All right. This was fun. Yeah, I mean, uh, guys coming up, uh, this is near the end of the season. We're going to be talking a lot about when the playoffs come around, you guys are going to want to hear our playoff predictions. It's going to be big. We do so well in this every single year. I mean, one year, Chris was like, "You, this is recorded. Chris said, if the Phoenix Suns beat the Lakers, they're going to go to the NBA championship. And they did, and they lost to the <laughs> Milwaukee Bucks. I chose the uh, Atlanta Hawks to beat the Philadelphia 76ers in the semifinals 
You know what I mean? Like we get these things very right. We really understand basketball. We're, we can't wait to break down to you guys about these breakdowns because it's going to be elite. So stay tuned. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> All righty, guys. This is the end. Thank you so much for listening. Yeah. Um, you know, check us out on YouTube, TikTok. Um, we don't really have much of an Instagram presence anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but soon. Um, yeah, just keep listening. Thank you for listening. If you disagree with anything we say, we're always open to, you know, talking to you guys in the comments. I love reading them actually. That's one of my favorite pastimes is reading comments. <laughs> So, <laughs> your twisted soul. <laughs> <laughs> I love reading. I love reading. I, lo- I love when somebody's like, you know, hey, that was a terrible take. And I'm like, thank you, because that means that you're listening. That's <laughs> all that matters. Whether it's terrible, whether you agree or disagree, you listen. So, thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Have a great night, everyone. All yeah. right. So, I'm Chris Muhammad. I'm Jason. And we are the Basketball X. Peace. Oh,